today we're going to take a break from working on the bees and we're going to get started working on the buzz. I'm going to share with you the recipe for the Beekeeper's Blonde Honey Ale. Uh, it's going to be kind of a long video. We're going to break it up into a few pieces. We're going to film it as we do the steps. So it will wind up being three or four videos over the next couple of months. Um, from today, we're going to brew the, we're going to put all these ingredients together. We're going to boil them. We're going to mix them together. Uh, we're going to get it fermenting. From today's point, it will take exactly six weeks until we're ready to pour this in a glass and enjoy it. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to use is not really an ingredient in our beer, but I really need to stress using uh, some kind of sanitizer in your beer. Uh, not in your beer, but in your beer making. Um, you go through all this trouble to buy these ingredients and get them together. You don't really want some kind of foreign bacteria or yeast to screw with your fermentation, produce off flavors or whatever. So it's important that once we boil this, everything that's going to touch our beer, including the bottles at the end, um, we want to sanitize all that. Okay, so as far as the ingredients for the actual beer itself, the most important ingredient is water. Um, it's also the uh, largest quantity ingredient for the recipe. We're going to get about seven gallons of good clean water. Um, you don't want to use water from your city tap if you can avoid it because it's got chlorine in it and it will kill the yeast and hamper what we're doing here. Um, if that's all you have to use, that's fine. Put it in some jugs, let it sit on the side for a couple days and let the chlorine dissipate like you would for a fish tank or something like that. Um, we get ours from a local ground spring here. Uh, it's, the water is delicious and it really, this is going to be what affects the taste of your final product the most is the water. So moving on down the line here, we have our fermentables. As most of you know, beer is basically barley and hops, okay? malted barley to be precise. And what that means is they've taken this barley and they've picked it and they've started to germinate the seeds. And once at a certain point, once they start to germinate, they halt that germination and they roast them and they produce all these different kinds uh, of malt. Today we're going to use one pound of Crystal 60 Lovabond malt. 60 Lovabond is the coloration, uh, how dark it is. This is Crystal 60. So we're going to get one pound of that and we're going to have them mill it for us. And what that means basically is they're going to take this grain and run it through their mill and crush it up so that we can extract the most sugars from it. We don't really want to use whole grains unless you have your own mill at home and you want to mill them right before you brew. Um, next on the list we have one pound of Carapils malt also milled. We're going to steep these grains and then we're going to, this will be the base of our beer. Okay, this is what will give us a little bit of the foam, a little bit of the body, um, the beer taste. Okay, moving down, this is um, malt extract. Since this is a partial extract recipe, we don't have the ability to do it with all grains. We don't have a pot that big, so we do use some malt extract in this recipe. And basically what that is, is a bunch of this boiled down to become a syrup. Um, and that's all it is, is just a malt extract syrup. This is three pounds of the lightest malt extract syrup that your brew supply sells. Uh, this is a Pilsner malt extract, so um, it should be really light colored. We, we're trying to keep the color on this beer to be light. It's a blonde ale. Moving on down the line of uh, fermentables, this would be what they would call your grain bill. You'll also hear it referred to as grain bill. So moving on down the grain bill, on your list of fermentables is we're going to use three pounds of some grade A honey. Whatever honey you have that you really love, um, you can really experiment with some different stuff. The honey is going to affect the coloration. If you use a darker honey, you're going to get richer flavors. This is a really light honey uh, with a floral taste. It, it really adds a lot to the beer in my opinion. I look forward to making a batch of this every year. Um, I take a three pound jar of our first honey of the year and I make this recipe uh, with it. It's just my favorite honey. So use whatever you want. Um, it will affect the color a little bit and it will affect the taste a little bit, but hey, that's what beer making is all about. So that's our fermentables. Next ingredient in beer, as you know, is hops. Um, these are Cascade hops. This is a two ounce package of hops. For this recipe, I've customized it a little bit. I'm not really big into the whole bitterness of beer. I like my beer a little less bitter, so uh, instead of using the whole two ounces, my recipe calls for one and a half ounce. Um, the extra you can put it in is, 
in a vacuum sealed bag, store it in your freezer until you make something else that has hops or something like that. But um, this recipe, you get two ounces of Cascade hops. And that's basically your beer. Um, optional ingredients, but I highly recommend them, is some Irish moss. And basically it's just an herb that you can put in your beer at the last 15 minutes of the boil. And that will really help with the clarity of your beer in the final product. Um, you don't want to be serving your friends a hazy beer. They'll kind of look at you funny. You want to really impress them and come out with your nice clear beer uh, that tastes delicious. So I really recommend putting a little Irish moss in there. Also, uh, not I guess not mandatory, but I put a little bit in all of my brews is some yeast nutrient. Um, a lot of times the yeast is going to need a little extra boost. It's not going to get all the nutrients that it requires from the fermentables that you have. Um, so to give it a little boost, this is basically nitrogen, it's diammonium phosphate, and it's basically a nitrogen source for your yeast to provide it with the proper nutrients to effectively convert your sugars into alcohol um, and also not produce off flavors. If the yeast is weak and can't produce the alcohol in the right um, uh, time span, it can start to off flavor your beer as well. So, and then the final ingredient in the beer is yeast. This is what's going to convert our fermentables into alcohol. And for this recipe, we use a Safe Ale SO4 yeast. I've also used the Safe Ale SO5 yeast. Um, basically, it's just a dry granulated yeast inside this package. We'll pour it in the beer, uh, in, in the wort actually, and it will convert the wort into beer. Um, yeast basically will eat the sugar and convert that sugar into ethanol, which is the alcohol, and it will off-gas CO2, which is why we use an airlock on our brews. So, from that point, once the beer is finished, you have some options. If you're going to put it in a keg, you won't need any further ingredients, and you won't really need to do anything else but put it in the keg. And I'll show that in another video. But for this recipe, we're going to actually put it in bottles. And this recipe, five gallons, is going to make us about 50 or 52 bottles. So, we've got bottle caps to put on our bottles when we're done. We also have some priming sugar, bottling sugar, whatever you want to call it. Um, some people call it different things. You'll find it sold as different things in your brew supply shop. But basically, the reason we use sugar is because the sweetness of the sugar, the sugar levels are more accurate, um, and, and we really need that when we're bottling the beer. Because if it's not high enough, you could have not enough carbonation in your beer, and if the, if the sugar levels are too high, you could have uh, dangerous bottles that could explode. So, you know, people are going to ask, well, why don't you use honey as your priming sugar? I choose not to because in honey you really, um, you're, you're, re you're really taking a chance because you're not having a definite sweetness. All honeys have a little bit different levels of sweetness in them. So, um, we, if you're kegging, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but we're bottling it and we're going to use some of this sugar. So that's the ingredients that we're going to use. Um, basically, we're going to get started on, on steeping these grains together, and we're going to boil this beer this afternoon. Okay, the first thing we need to do to make beer is to convert the starch in our grains to sugars that the yeasts can consume and make alcohol. So what we need to do is bring a pot of water. I got about a gallon and a half of water here, and my temperature is right at about 160 degrees. Okay, you want it to be right at 160 degrees so that when you drop this grain bag in here, the temperature is going to drop a couple degrees. You want to keep this at about 150, 155 degrees for 45 minutes. Okay, and that temperature, you're going to be basically creating a mash. You're going to soak these grains in here for 45 minutes, and that will create the sugars that you need to leach the starches out and create convert them to sugars so that we can make beer out of it. It's important to keep this covered, keep it as close to that temperature as possible, 45 minutes, and we'll come back and check on it. Okay, after you've had your grain steeping for 45 minutes, we're going to take the lid on this. We're going to heat some water to 170 degrees, about a half gallon of water. We're going to pull our grain bag out. And we're going to set it in the strainer. It's really important not to squeeze these grains as best as possible. 
you'll release a lot of tannins and it'll kind of produce a little off flavors and stuff. So basically we'll take this 170 degree water and we're going to rinse these grains off. And basically this stops the sugar conversion and rinses all the sugars possible out into the liquid below. So we'll do about half of it. And I'll go ahead flip this over. We'll rinse the other side. Get all the last little bit of sugar we can out of there. Okay. Set that on the side. We'll let this drain off. Let that set for just a second. And basically what we're doing here is now we've got a, a sugar solution based off this barley and we're going to get ready to boil this with some hops and then we'll add our yeast. So again it's important not to squeeze these grains but you want to let all that good sugar drain out of there. That's about good enough. So we'll put this on the side. We're going to actually make some dog treats with that spent grains. We'll do that in another video. But now we have this, we'll get ready to put this on the fire and get it boiling. Alright, so we basically take our two gallons of barley tea that we steeped and we put it on the fire and we got it to a boil. And basically once it gets close to a boil, you want to keep stirring it. Uh, you're going to experience what they call hot break in many cases, which is all the proteins kind of coagulating and kind of coming to the surface, makes a foam at the top. Uh, if you don't keep stirring it through there and let some air out, uh, it'll rise over and, and boil over. Hence, you see we're doing this outside. So um, now that we've gotten our, our liquid to a boil here, we're going to take and put in a bag of hops. This is one ounce of Cascade hops. We're going to kind of dunk this in here a little bit, tie it off. Kind of dink, dunk it in there, make sure it's all wet. And basically this round of hops is going to determine our bitterness for the beer. And you can see right now we've got a nice golden beer going on. So we're going to set the timer for 60 minutes. Uh, we need a 60 minute total time on this, but we're going to add some hops when we have 15 minutes left in the boil. So we're going to boil this uncovered right now for 60 minutes. Okay, we've got 15 minutes left in our 60 minute boil. So we're going to add the yeast nutrient. We're going to take a half a teaspoon of that. We're going to take some Irish moss. We're going to take a whole teaspoon of that. And that's for clarity. And then we're going to take another half ounce of these beautiful Cascade hops. Uh, this hop addition is going to be for flavor in the beer. Cascade has a nice grapefruit, citrusy flavor. So we're just going to throw this in there. I'm not going to bother with putting it in a bag. We're going to strain it out in a little while anyway. So like I said, we've got 15 minutes left on this. We're going to let this stuff go for another 15 minutes uncovered. And then we'll add our malt extract and cool this off and get ready to ferment. Smells delicious. Okay, so our 60 minute timer is up. We're going to turn off the heat, flame out, and we're going to add our malt extract syrup. I don't know how much fun it's going to be trying to get it out of this pouch. We usually we get it in jugs. But we're going to stir this in here. That's a nice golden brown, yeah. And basically this is exactly what we're just making. It's just a barley extract syrup. 
So we're going to add it to our mixture. And basically at this point it will be called wort. It has all the makings to become beer. You can see some of these hops. Pretty looking. Basically we'll get all the syrup out of here and get it stirred in here and we're going to get this wort cooled off as quick as possible. Okay, now that we've got all the malt extract stirred in really good, uh, there's no more sticking on the spoon. Okay, we're good. We're going to cover this. We're going to set it in a bucket of ice here. We're going to pour some ice around it. And we're going to get this cooled off as quickly as possible. Basically we want to get this cooled off as quick as possible to prevent any infections. We want to get this cooled down and get the yeast put in there as quick as possible. So we're going to give that a little while to cool down and we want to get it to around 75, 80 degrees and then we can mix it in our fermentation bucket and add the yeast. So we're almost finished. Okay, well our wort is done chilling. We've got this down to about 80 degrees, so it's time to mix it in with the rest of the water. We're going to take this hops bag out, drain it off pretty good. Um, it's really important that we don't let the dogs get this. This is poisonous to dogs. Spent hops are poisonous to dogs. They will die from hypothermia. So we definitely don't want the dogs to get a hold of this. We'll dispose of this properly in a garbage bag, put it out in next week's trash. So basically we just want to let this drain out a little bit. And I'll go ahead and put this in that bowl. So we've already sanitized our bucket, we've sanitized the strainer, we've got our airlock and the spoon sanitizing in there. Um, everything that touches the beer from here on should be sanitized. So. We're going to strain this wort through the strainer into these three gallons of water that I already have um, to get rid of any of the particles of hops and stuff like that. Okay, again, we do not want to let the dogs get a hold of this. This is poisonous to them. Okay, get all the liquid out as we can. And set that here on the side. Okay, and I can see that we are not quite at five gallons. So we're gonna go ahead and top off this jug, this bucket, because we're looking to make five gallons of beer. That's right at about five gallons there. Get add a little bit more. Good enough. Okay. And then we're going to come in here and find our spoon that's in the sanitizer. Kind of air dry it a little bit. And then we're going to come in here. And we're going to kind of splash this around good. We want to aerate this wart really well. The yeast breathe oxygen and let off CO2. So we kind of really want to oxygenate this water. Okay, 
when you think you've got it oxygenated pretty well, which I think you do. Okay, you can see. Got a golden beer here. So we're ready to put the yeast in now. I'm going to put the yeast in and put an airlock on it. Okay, so for the yeast that we're using for this, like I said, is a Safe Ale SO4. And what we're going to do is take this, sprinkle it over the top of this wart. You can see it's kind of just granulated yeast. A lot of people will make a starter and all that. Uh, I just kind of sprinkle it on there. That's it. Okay, then after that, you've got your yeast in there. You're going to take a sanitized lid. Nice and tight on there. You're going to find your airlock. Attach your airlock in here. You're going to fill your airlock up to the line with water. That basically allows the CO2 to escape but it does not allow oxygen in. I can't seem to find, there's the lid. This has a little top on it, so no solids can get in there. And now we're gonna leave this for the next 14 days. Um, so that's the end of this video. Next time we pick it up, we're gonna actually be racking it off of this and putting the honey into it for a secondary fermentation. So be looking out in a couple weeks for the next video. Thanks for watching. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention is to put this in a closet or something, a cool dark place. Um, and after a few hours, next day, we're here 24 hours later, and we've got bubbles coming up pretty good in our airlock. Um, that lets us know that the yeasts are working, they're consuming the sugar, they're off-gassing CO2, everything looks as it should here. So, um, we're going to let this sit for now it's 13 days. So we're going to come back in 13 days, and we're going to rack this beer into a secondary fermenter, add the honey to it, and we're going to let it ferment for another two weeks on top of that. So look out for the second video, and thanks for watching.